So let's, let's say you and I go to the zoo and it's very cool, right? We, we have this conversation on the way. We see things while we're there. We talk while we're there. Once we're done, we leave. If we can replicate things like that or even go into the theater or go into a show, if we can replicate that but virtually – through live stream, how cool would that be? So maybe you're sitting in a theater and I can, even though it's a virtual experience, a live stream experience, I can talk to the person next to me. Maybe I don't know that person, but in real life that would also happen. You know, maybe we're at the zoo together, we know each other, but we can watch the tigers feed during their feeding schedule, but we can also chat about it. You know, like bringing all those things into one beautiful uh, product Steve, um, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Hey, good, good. How are you doing? Um, yeah, thanks for have, uh, coming on. Uh, you know, we rescheduled a few times, and uh, it was a pleasure to get uh, get you involved here because uh, generally we we work with companies coming out of uh, incubators. You know, oh, generally really? okay, they're cool. they're brand new, and they come on the uh, come on, and uh, they're talking about how they started. But newly, I believe it's been around for a few years now, right? Yeah, you know, we've had some ups and downs. We've had some good failure over the last few years. And uh, here we are, we're back and really get some traction in this new way. So, yeah, I'm super excited to talk about it. I, this stuff I love, man. I love anything from, from incubator companies to startups. This is uh, it's kind of a passion of mine. So thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about that, you know, because generally, you know, uh, again, we hear from we have startups that are, you know, brand spanking new generally. And then we hear of startups who are, you know, raise X millions of dollars and <laughs> they've hired everybody in the world. Right. And um, <clears throat> so like the in-between stories of like startups that run over a period of time, uh, I'd love to learn more about about you because I, I believe you were founded in 2014. That was the yeah, that was when we first started. We had a, okay. and it was crazy. It was a totally different idea, but yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's when we started this thing, and uh, it's taken a while to get where we are now. Cool. Let's talk about that journey. Um, so, what is Newly, and what do you guys do? So, currently, Newly, uh, we are the social event apps. We're helping people from around the world explore the world through live streaming video. So, we here's something we're passionate about, man. We, we um, me and my co-founder Greg Stonehawker, we honestly believe that. The more you travel the world, experience cultures, experience places, experience that stuff, the better your life is. It really is. You know, gaining perspective, gaining these relationships, seeing how cultures work and understanding that, hey, you know what? This culture is amazing. They, they work really great and they don't do the, the, the things the same way we do. And so we just think people should see more of the world. But the problem today is is – uh, number one is kind of not accessible to a lot of people. COVID is one big reason, but for a lot of people, the world is just not accessible, whether it's not affordable. Um, you don't have that time off. If you have a young family, I mean, it's very difficult to travel. Mm -hmm. with kids. So we want to help people explore the world through live streaming video right now and, and get them to see those cultures and those places and do it in a better way. You know, that's, that's the goal of newly. And that's where we, that's where we're, our heads are focused at right now. Yeah, I mean, Steve, I, I love I love this because I'm thinking about this myself. Because uh, like before, we talked about coming on this podcast. Uh, I found myself stuck in this one place, my house, for the past year and a half, and have to operate, or live, work, and and uh, enjoy life all all through here. And this is the most I've ever been stuck in one place. You know, yeah. I, it's, I, hard, I, right? it's, it's hard. hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's very hard. I, I mean, I've yeah. always found myself to be like a, a traveling salesman. I love the idea of going places and like. And like meeting new people and yeah. immerse myself with new things, right? Like it, it, for me, it's all about immersion. It's not just about like a touch face. It's like if I'm going after something, like I need to be immersed in that. If, like, yeah. if I want to work in, uh, work with people in the financial industry, I'm going to go immerse myself in the industry. Go, you know, uh, go to the places where they would go. Go see what that place looks like. You know, what do they talk about, right? And exactly. like that, that immersion is so, is so key. So how can we take all that and have this kind of experiences virtually? That's the best part is it is a world that is completely unexplored yet. You mm. know, the, the, the whole idea right now is somebody goes live, they can show you somewhere, they can show you someplace. But our focus is how do we take people and basically allow anyone to teleport anywhere with anyone at any time? You know what I mean? Like, how, how do we do that? We're starting with basic live streaming, but we're in a, in a time where the biggest, the biggest roadblocks mm -hmm. were technology. Especially if you're streaming from a cell phone, like how great 
is your connection and that connection sustain some sort of bandwidth that is required to send that out to millions of devices all over the world. Like that is now becoming a possibility. And so we're just barely hitting that point where this is going to be possible for people. In the future, it might look like somebody putting on a headset and the host holding a, a phone with a 360 camera where you as the attendee can just look around and feel like you're there. Mm. You know, we can't replace the smell. We can't do all of that stuff, but maybe that's not a bad thing depending where you are. But it's, you know, we're going to get there. We want to be on that wave. And so that's where we're setting up this platform where any host, anybody in the world that has unique interests, a unique place, uh, a unique story can just list an event, be discovered in a really cool social way. And then give that that event and, and give that presentation to anybody who's booked it. And as we grow, I think there are so many great things we can do to help people feel more part of the world, mm-hmm. even though you're on your couch at home, right? Yeah. yeah. So let's let's talk about these virtual uh, events because you know I got really into Clubhouse during the pandemic, right? Uh, early in the year, and we were hosting these events where people are coming into the rooms, and it was like, all organic, and it felt like I was running a private club out of my uh, out of my living room. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, like I literally ha- it literally delivered on the name of the uh, name of that. You ran your own clubhouse, and you could just do it while sitting on your couch. Yeah. And it, it, at a point where you know I was doing this daily every. Every night I was doing a running one and very similar, same people are coming and new people are coming and there's a culture forming there. It felt like, you know, um, I could virtually put myself there. And yeah. all it took was the power of audio. It didn't need a fully immersive environment. It just needed me to have that kind of social cohesion being delivered mm-hmm. through, that, through a platform. Yeah. But then, you know, um, that magic got, kind of dissipated as the lockdown ended and we had other uh, utilities, you know, attention of everyone shifted elsewhere and you couldn't have that again. So yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, ask your question. Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll let to dissect this with you, right? Like, I mean, was this experience? I want to know personally. Was this experience because of lockdown and, and everything else is so isolated from me that uh, my, the social consciousness was, was meant to connect virtually through like the limited bandwidth of audio, and we just found a way? Or is it something that like we can replicate and maintain? Yeah, it's a super good question. I think Clubhouse is a really interesting case study. I'm interested to see what other people think of it too. My opinion of Clubhouse, and I've only used it a few times, is um, what a beautiful way to connect with people, right? There's a lot of people are so uncomfortable going on video, you know, and, and having that ability to just jump on with audio is you don't have to be ready. You don't have to look good. You don't have to be anything. You just kind of join in and chat. And so I think that's a brilliant part of, of Clubhouse. Um, I think the hard part for Clubhouse is going to be that Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, they just replicate those features. Um, but I think Clubhouse got enough traction in the beginning where they can figure out what their niche is. I think a lot of companies might experience it where, you know, especially if you're successful right off the bat, you get a huge influx of people because people are wanting to use it. They did a great job of their marketing. Like you can only get in with an invite. I mean, that was brilliant. Um, so they had a huge influx of people. Now they got all those people. They'll figure out, you know, what the best way to use clubhouse is now based on their Mm -hmm. information. Um, but of course you'll see a dip off now that people can go out and and do more things, right? It's, it's, uh, I would love to be in that situation where you're trying to figure out what to do with all the money you (laughs) raise and knowing what the statistics of your users are, how they interact with your app, who your core users are, and really start to hit in that vein. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that they, they can figure it out. You know, but that dip in, in users is going to be just because I think a lot of people tested the waters quick. You know, yeah. that was me. I tested it. Somebody invited me. I was like, what's this? Jumped on. The flow was beautiful. Jumping mm. into the app, was, everything was so smooth. Uh, and then I just never found anyone I wanted to chat with. And then life got busy and it, I turned off my notifications. So I, I yeah. just never see it anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, that was the whole point of their invite only system was that to slow down the traffic as much as they could so they can like they, they face the same pro- problem that Facebook did. Right. Um, like the way the way why Chamat Papatia is, is so fa- famous and this problem he solved for Facebook was when Facebook hit 60 million users, it couldn't grow anymore because new people coming in didn't know anyone in the college uh, university at, at, uh, ecosystem. They were completely disconnected from that social sphere. So they coming in, they couldn't find any mutual friends. And within six seconds, they bounced out and never come back again. So Clubhouse has the exact same thing. Like within six, six, six seconds, if you can't find the utility for a new tool, you're not going to stay. Yeah. And that's pretty demanding for an audio platform. Think about it, right? Yeah. The platform of audio is so new. And one of the things I, I can appreciate to this is that 
you know, how many, how much, how much, how quickly it's grown. We have like audio speakers, you know, that we're getting comfortable talking technology with. We have this audio piece of content that uh, we engage with podcasts and listening to uh, music now, like um, all with like, you know, with headphones and stereo sound, right? People are becoming more and more ingrained in the idea of audio. So when you talk about immersive experiences and virtual experiences, like what, you know, like does it include an audio uh, experience? Can it be tuned just for that? Or do you find it to be more immersive, like, yeah, I mean, if we're thinking about the future, if we think about right now, the current situation where Newly is, it's, it's simply a live stream that you connect with and you are able to message back and forth with the host. You can raise your hand and go on with audio, something people are familiar with. So there's a lot of familiar pieces to the Newly game that a lot of people understand and be able to use right off the bat. If we're talking about the future. I think all of those things are important, you know. Um, being able to properly have that audio experience, have that visual experience. There's so mm -hmm. many pieces of the puzzle to give people a great experience. It's just a matter of time. You know, what works best? Where do we start? What what piece of the whole puzzle makes the most sense right now? That's the best part about a startup is, is hey, we think this is the best move. You make the move. And, and if you were right, great. If you weren't like, well, back, back to the drawing board, you know? And yeah, so I think as far as immersive experiences go, audio is beautiful. I think visual I'm a visual guy. I love to see things. I love to do new things. I love to see new people. I mm. think that's pretty cool. I think there's also really unique use cases where if you try to replicate, like, okay, so for example, let's say, let's say you and I are going to go to the zoo. The zoo is a, like a couple of grown men going to the zoo. I mean, maybe. So <laughs> let's say you and I go to the zoo. Yeah. And it's very cool, right? We, we have this conversation on the way. We see things while we're there. We talk while we're there. Once we're done, we leave. If we can replicate things like that or even go into the theater or go into a show, if we can replicate that but virtually through live stream, how cool would that be? So mm -hmm. maybe you're sitting in a theater and I can, even though it's a virtual experience, a live stream experience, I can talk to the person next to me. Maybe I don't know that person. But in real life, that would also happen. You know, Maybe we're at the zoo together. We know each other, but we can watch the tigers feed during their feeding schedule, but we can also chat about it. You know, like bringing all those things into one beautiful uh, product would be amazing. That's where we're going to go. You know, mm. that it's going to take some time to get there. But if we can, we can take the real world feel and replicate it in the virtual world, I think that's where there's a lot of beauty, but then allow individuals to be the creators of these events and experiences. I think that's like, for me, that is so cool. I think it's so, so amazing, especially talk to any tour guide today. They're struggling, you know? Hmm. And they're the mercy of the world. You know, there's got to be this second option. I don't think people can any longer really rely on physical attendance. If your business relies on physical attendance, it can be overnight wiped out. Now, is it going to hmm. happen? Is another COVID going to happen? Everyone hopes not. You know, but is it could it? Well, now we know. Yeah. So I think it's a very safe, smart play for anybody, whether it's newly or anything else, it, it, whether it's us or or somebody else who comes along down the line, or maybe say Facebook event you, you release. I think that two pronged approach is just necessary these days, right? Yeah, I love how you put it that way because um, it's about that um, diversifying yourself and, and being and omnipresent. I'd love to ask you this question: um, What does the word metaverse mean to you? Yeah. <laughs> Metaverse, jeez, I don't even know. Well, what does it mean to you? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've been hearing this thrown around a lot, especially people talking about virtual experiences and um, you know the vir like the virt anything with the virtual in it. Uh, you know, you kind of hear the word meta metaverse attached to it now, especially after uh, Mark Zuckerberg announced that Facebook is now a metaverse company. Yeah. Um, and you the see that cool demo he did with uh, with the news people. I did not watch a demo. How how'd it go? Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's very, very early stage, but you can see what the future looks like where there's people from all over in one room that was created uh, for them to be in. Anyways, yeah, it was, it was really cool to see. Yeah, I mean, the best way I had it explained to me was like, it's like the, the, the ultimate form being like uh, Ready Player One, the movie yes. or the book, if you're familiar with it, right? Yeah. Where people are engaged with like a virtual environment where they not just like uh, interact with or get entertainment from, but uh, getting like resources from, like they're making money from it. And um, Ready Player One, like especially the book, talked about like the dystopian aspect of that, where you can be sucked in into like these um, into the virtual space, and everything's kind of like in that uh, all all uh, economic value comes from that tool, so that the external and your actual in, uh, environment is kind of neglected. And 
uh, this idea that a virtual versus um, of in person, right? Like, I think it's really having shockwaves in the financial in, uh, industry. So, uh, Scott Galloway talks about how right now what we're doing is we're not seeing any, any wealth uh, destruction. We're seeing the wealth uh, transformation uh, moving from the number one asset class in the world, commercial real estate, to the number two real, uh, um, asset class, which is residential real estate. People are now making their physical environment better, investing more in their housing, investing more into their physical environment, and then using that as their base of their comfort and uh, workspace, right? So how we interact virtually, now that you can work anywhere, now we can uh, interact virtually, actually is now having real world repercussions. How people are, are behaving economically in the real world has changed, right? And COVID's kind of taught us that. So I, I, like one of the things thoughts about this is like, how does, it, how does this proceed more into a, into a metaverse where like everything you kind of do now is almost can be done virtually? Totally. Yeah, you know, think of it as a platform play. You know, Facebook has such a massive platform and they're an incredible company, right? And uh, And so they'll lead the way in a lot of the stuff and likelihood of them having a platform with Oculus is probably pretty high, you know, so you can list things on their platform. And as a result, I mean, they'll, I'm sure they have some sort of me, uh, uh, monetary and information uh, benefit from it. But yeah, I think it's a smart, smart thing. That's obviously in the future we see it with NFTs. I mean, who would have ever thought that there would be value in some random uh, uh, non fungible token or like, a picture that you can buy and you own and people are paying so much money for it. You know, it's, that's such an interesting insight into where the world is headed mm -hmm. to this not tangible. People love real estate because you can touch it. All of a sudden you see people who are putting so much value on things you just can't touch, you know, mm -hmm. like that is an actual world that's going to come our way. So if we think about it in newly terms, it makes so much sense, you know, as we grow, to look into that space to say, hey, you know what? We want to be a, 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 a another world for people. Hmm. But here's where I have an issue. I th the physical world in the near future, I think is going to be very hard to be replaced. And the only reason I say that is there's going to be beautiful places created in the virtual world down the road, 100%. Somebody will be able to use an incredible software to create this amazing world where we can all go visit through our headsets. I think mm -hmm. that's smart. It's inevitably going to go there and you can travel the world, these unique worlds all over the place that are made by other people. I think that's obviously no brainer. Um, but we still live on this big rock <laughs> and this big rock has all of this history and all of this history is attractive to so many people. So mm -hmm. that is where our niche ends up going at the moment. Right. Um, whether our niche opens up later on to allow people to create worlds and create these ex experiences that can be listed on newly. That's kind of a no brainer. I think obviously one day it should go there. But in the near future, I, I think the real world can beat out that that mm. and virtual world because there's so much to see. So much to see. You just gave us uh, so much hope, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love I love that perspective because yeah. you're on this rock that has so much history and that's the attraction force, right? People are connected so much to that. So regardless of the physically go there, they still want to be attached to the physical space. Yeah. Like and, how how old are you? Uh, I'm thirty two. Okay, so so let's say anyone from the, the age of, of twenty and up. Let's say twenty five and up. Um these are rough stats. I don't know any of these stats, but I'm going to say these are people who have an appreciation for world history, for the world travel, for those things. And I do think that age group still wants to see a physical world. I do mm. think that because the physical world, like I said, to be able to touch, to be able to feel, to be able to experience the way cultures do things, it is so hard to replicate. Will it get there one day? Maybe. But right now, I think it's so hard to replicate that people still want to do the travel. And if they can't do that travel to the physical place, I think the second best option is how can I get a live streamer? How can, how can I get a guide to show me that place through the eyes mm -hmm. of a local, through the lens of somebody who lives there? So I do think the physical world is very, very much uh, safe right now. Yeah. And the future world, how it integrates with our physical reality, it'll, it'll be really interesting. I do think when Apple talks about their augmented reality, I think augmented reality is a much more interesting use case than, than virtual reality. Because I think overlaying things in your real world is really cool, really trippy, really fun. And I think there's going to be people who do some really cool things around it. Yeah. Like, uh, like, so here's, here's a cool example, I think. Yep. Let, let's say you go to the zoo. 
and you I, I don't know why the reason I'm on the zoo, the zoo. I, I was I on the Power zoo two weeks ago yeah <laughs> so I'm on the zoo kick but it's a really good use case if you and I went to the zoo again and um and we we're walking around but we had this augmented reality experience and this mm-hmm. augmented reality showed us tigers walking around instead of tigers behind cages mm. Like that would be really cool. I think the physical reality of the actual tigers is cool, but then integrating animals into your whole experience would be very, very interesting, right? Have you, have you seen the Van Gogh uh, exhibit downtown? I've heard my my in laws went. They said it was amazing. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, I gotta get them hit, hit that up too. But I think it's the same kind of idea, right? That immersive environment kind of attracts to it. But what you're saying is like you're blending a physical space and and uh, and um, and real world items together. And yeah. I, I totally get I totally get that, right? Yeah, but I, I mean, it's yeah, very cool. Yeah. So just going back to your idea, this concept of like taking tour guides, right? That yeah. tour guide aspect of, uh, of, of, you know, being able to travel through people. Uh, I mean, Instagram was built on that idea. I mean, travel mm-hmm. photography was what, one of the first main things that built Instagram's content network, right? Yeah. Content stream. Um, yeah. that, that, was, um, that was the content that I really sold. And, and it's still one of the main things that people like to. Like they love watching these influencers travel around and experience different things. And it gives them ideas, right? Cool. Even, some, even like, you know, uh, going to a, on, a, on a trip, a lot of people nowadays will go and see what their favorite influencers would go through or go and see what I'll do a poster about that region, right? It's part of that experience that, you know, they, you want to see what other people experience and you want to buy that buy into that experience. Yeah. And um, someone was telling me about this. It's like the future is becoming more experiential. People want to buy experiences, mm-hmm. right? They don't want to buy its product or services anymore. They want to buy experiences mm-hmm. and they'll probably pay a, pay a premium for that. Right, yeah. uh, because experiences are such a differentiated product. You're not really competing against anybody. You're competing against what you can deliver. That's bespoke. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, it, it, experiences over things. Like that's that's mm. that's the movement. And think about life. When you get together with your buddies, do you talk about that one time you bought a product. You talk about that one time you did something. Almost almost 100 percent of the time is like, remember when we did this? Mm. Or I have to tell you what I experienced when I was in Mexico. Like that. That is the anchor of so much of who we are yeah. that it's, 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 it's just in us. That's what we want to see. Like we're humans and we mm-hmm. want to experience life, right? Facebook is such, a, is such an interesting example. Like Facebook and Instagram, those, those places have so much ability to inspire for travel, for t- photography, for video, for lives. I mean, and they're going to allow these creators to monetize even more and more and more as we go. I mean, the cool use case about that, or, or if you think about the, the history of it, Facebook always had a, a photo feature, right? Then Instagram came along and did photos better, right? And, and so they acquired them for a billion dollars. And that was just such a smart acquisition because now, now Instagram is literally becoming a hub for shopping, for pictures, mm. for, for creators, right? It's, it's, a great, it's a great way to explore people's ideas, people's feelings, people's thoughts, people's worlds, um, where we're trying to find our niche and where I think our niche fits perfectly is just the same example as Facebook to Instagram is Facebook, Instagram to newly where our focus is only on live streaming tours around the world. And we have another focus that we'll talk about not now, but in the future where I think we can do a really, really good job. We're not something for everybody. We're something specifically for a niche consumer and that is the people who want to see the world and so all of our content all of our focus is specifically around finding the right people to show us the right places and be able to immerse people into those places and bring those places to people since they can't travel all the time maybe it's a classroom maybe a classroom is like hey we would love to show our students peru because that's the topic of our social studies right now Mm -hmm. Uh, it would be amazing why couldn't they come on to newly find that guide and do a tour like how much how much more great would our education be as just individuals and classrooms if we could just be or or easily find the person to give us an amazing tour through the eyes of a local of a specific place that's meaningful to us right that's where it gets so cool for me anyways yeah so let's talk about these cases like you know um these these tours right what would they look like like can you give us an example of a great one we had a, we had such a cool tour. Okay, so Netherlands every year Netherlands has um, uh, is it roses? Um, not roses. Their main flower. Uh, no tulips. Tulips. They have their tulip festival. Yeah. And we had this lady, Kitty. Kitty is just she's such a great host. 
And, uh, and obviously I've never been to Netherlands for the Tulip Festival, mm -hmm. but she did a tour of the Tulip Festival and it was, it was so cool. Even though it was just through my phone, right? Like if I could have been there in person, is that better? Of course, you know, uh, but through my phone, I was able to just watch a local local guide, mm -hmm. take me through the area, ask her questions, experience the area, see the culture and just get a cool behind the scenes of the Tulip Festival. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was really amazing. And that's, that's the MVP of Newly. It, it's, it's so, so simple. Anyone can see it. Anyone can use it. Anyone can list things. The discovery has a social feature where maybe your friends can shout out, which is a retweet of a person or an event that they think is great. And I now can discover new things that my friends like or new things that I might be interested in. Mm -hmm. And that discovery is really, really important. Um, because if we rewind back a long time ago with Newly, we're solving just two problems. You know, the first thing is, uh, you know, helping people explore the world through live streaming video. I want to bring that to them. But the second one, we don't, we don't, we don't discover events online like we want to, right? <laughs> okay. So I'll ask you a question. Um, if you were to, if you were going to Mexico, how do you find something to do right now? Right what? now. So am I in Mexico right now or am I here going to Mexico? Either one. Like what, what, what's, how do you currently find uh, the best experience for you to do? Uh, Google maps. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Right. So Google maps. Yeah. Now, um, people do that. The Google search, mm -hmm. right? Um, do you find that sometimes you revert? So you might go, go to Google maps and see things. If your friends were to tell you one thing to do, would you put your friend's opinion above anything else that Google maps told you? Absolutely. It's this weird thing, right? Like as humans, mm -hmm. we, we can go online and we can find these list aggregators all the time, Yeah. right? Uh, Google Maps, we can go to Google. It doesn't matter. We, we search things to do in Mexico. And then you find a list of 20 things. And you're like, wow, there's all these things to do. But do you have any friends that have been there? And if they have been there, what things do they like to do? Almost every single time I'm going to pick, oh, my friend who I trust, who have similar ideas or, or similar uh, things that we like. I'm just going to do that. And then all of those list aggregators are, are, are gone. You don't care about them anymore. Then you just choose the one that's the best price and book it. That's it. And so I think that's the second big problem is people want to discover events in a better way. You know, mm -hmm. they don't want to be told by a list aggregator what the top things are most of the time. They want their friends to say, I was there. I did a tour with Steve. It was amazing. You should do it. Done. Right? So that is the other big problem that we need to solve and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, reverting back to that, like, uh, you know, ma maintaining a company and, and, and doing, uh, trying to do all this during COVID, right? You yourself are isolated. You want to get out. You feel this pain. Other people are, are experiencing this. Um, how do you, how do you run the team? Like how yeah. do you function? Well, let me tell you something funny about COVID is our original product that we mm -hmm. worked on for, it was about a year, just over a year. Our first failure we launched after a year failed. We mm -hmm. came back, we were launching a second product all for the tourism world and I'm about that second problem I just talked about, about being able to discover the world uh, through your friends, see what your friends have been booking. Yeah. We built this beautiful product for Android, for, for the web, for iOS and uh, we launched it in November uh, 2019 and we tested it in January we started uh, working a little harder. In February, we started getting traction. I think at that point, we had 60, 60-ish people or companies listing events on our platform, which was great. I mean, we were super excited. We were, it, looked like, it looked like things were happening for us. March, COVID hit, and that tourism world, that $1 trillion industry, it just was gone overnight. And so we spent so long, so much time aligning ourselves with that world, and, uh, and then it was gone in a heartbeat. And it was devastating. It was uh, it was really sad. You know, we didn't know what to think in the beginning. We thought, okay, well, two weeks wear masks. Okay, maybe it'll go away. After two weeks, we started thinking like, what's our backup plan? Like, what's plan B if if the world doesn't open up again? You know, and so that's where we came up with with our new new approach. But um, how do you maintain a company? Oh man, uh, we're lucky we're small. I don't know how you do it with a big company. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Uh, Slack for us is amazing, um, but I think. If you have the right vision mm -hmm. and the right people in the right places, I think a lot of that takes care of itself. 
Um, yep. trying, trying to steer the ship is hard, right? Like there's so many opportunities that might come your way, but also so many times we're searching for the opportunities. Mm-hmm. You have to have that North star because if there's no opportunities, you need to know where you need to go to find them. If there's too many opportunities, you need to know which ones you're supposed to say no to, right? I think it's always going to be a balancing act. And so as long as your vision is proper and you know, and you're passionate about that vision, I think everything else, as far as people and tasks and, and future features, I think all of that starts to fit in place and then you can take care of your customer in the best way possible. Yeah. I mean, one of my, one of my uh, friends is uh, Ruben. He's a angel investor from uh, Sandhill Angels in California. And he oh, talks cool. about this. It's like, we're seeing the rise of like storytelling entrepreneurs. Yes. Right. And it's like a CEO is one of the main, one of the, like, you know, you, you have to have, be multifaceted as CEO. You got to know a few things, right? Uh, you know, managing people, recruiting people. But one of the things is storytelling. You know, what is the story of your company? What do you, what, you, what problem are you solving? How are you going to operate? What is, um, what are, what are the values of the, of the firm? How is the culture being set? Like, these are also things you got to think about too. And how you communicate that is through story, storytelling. And if you can tell a compelling enough story, people just kind of fall in line and like, figure out the rest you know yeah. uh, I, I remember one uh, I was talking to um, the CEO uh, you know one of the founders of eSight uh, a Toronto based company uh, they, they discovered like 90% of people who are legally blind uh, are not actually blind they just have they can still see in like very in small areas of their eyes, they, you know, like uh, all that. So they just kind of machine that can hyper focus things and insert information into that piece of the eye and force the brain to kind of see. And huh. it's a crazy tool. And they got away with it. And one of the main things the founder was like, we were all so captivated by by being able to do that. That you sound like magic. And, you know, and they were just so inspired by that. Like all these smart people just came in and, and poured I- ideas into this firm about how to make it happen. Yeah. All uh, right. And everyone in that company was so inspired. Eastside is still, uh, you know, I think they raised um, the Series B round recently during COVID. And they're go- they're, they've saved a lot of people's um, uh, um, sight, right? They've so given cool. people hope, right? And all because of a great story. Well, and you know what's amazing about that? When your story is greater than you, like they're helping people. That is like that is an emotional thing that translates so far through employees of the company and to the world. You cannot beat that. You know what I mean? For newly helping people explore the world through live streaming video or just explore the world, I, I think that is so amazing. When somebody comes to me and says, I never thought I'd get to see the Coliseum through the eyes of a local or just see the Coliseum through a local tour guide. And I loved it. I loved seeing it. I'm mm. on a new high. I have this new inspiration. That is amazing. And people really do change when they see new parts of the world, see new cultures, learn new things. And, and I think that should be part of every single company. Another great company is Asana. I mean, their mission to help people work better, and they have a certain mission statement that I don't know. But mm. every time Justin... Rosenstein, I mm. probably remember his name, um, but man, he is so passionate about getting people to work better together to accomplish more. It's so attractive, and yeah. as a result, I mean, they're probably one of the most innovative project management slash company management platforms out there. You know, and that storytelling, that passion, the helping people. I think there's something really pa- powerful about helping people. When you're just trying to help yourself and build that multi-million, billion-dollar company. People will get there, you know, mm. um, there are the people will get there. But when you have that overall vision of helping others, I, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. And, and you've experienced this, I'm sure, with so many people talking to you. When your passion runs out or things get hard as an entrepreneur, which 100% chance they will uh, day mm-hmm. in and day out, it's, it's hard to stay motivated if you don't have that guiding light. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, especially that, the motivating, uh, motivating part, because um, I think it was, it's, it's, a, it's another jobs quote, but it's like smart people will figure out the problem. That's why they're there. Your job is to give them a reason why to solve that problem. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. You're right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you, know, you know, speaking of that, so I, I love this aspect of, uh, you know, this global travel and, and keeping people engaged and, and global things. Is there any like crazy vision for this? Like, is there, is there a way uh, this can be financed to like, 
explore the bottom of the oceans, which is 80% still undiscovered, you know? Uh, could a community could come together and, like, you know, uh, fund an expedition like that? Like, what, is it, what does a crazy future look like in store with uh, Newly? Man, here's what I think the perfect vision would be. Um, I've written this out, and I read it to myself often in the morning. It's just to... Mm. Um, just to keep myself like in line in check and whether newly turns out this way or not, it doesn't really matter because it's really motivating for me right now. So, um, a typical day with newly could be, um, me wake up and let's say I, I open up the newly app. I see all of my friends shouting out this really unique experience. Maybe that experience is going to the bottom of the ocean and, um, I'm like, that sounds amazing. It's happening today at five o'clock. So I book it. You know, five o'clock comes around and I have a headset of some type and the headset doesn't have to be Oculus. It could be anything. I put, I put the headset on and, uh, I hook up to newly and all of a sudden I'm immersed in this pre-show where I like, okay, I know we're going to be going to the bottom of the ocean, whatever type of content this company has created. They've given that content to me. I'm looking at it. I'm seeing it, but it becomes very immersive because as soon as the live video starts, I'm able to look around and feel like I'm in whatever submarine I'm in. So all of a sudden, from waking up in the morning to later at night, I've completely transformed and teleported to this one really cool scenario. Mm. In the submarine, there might be one or two people there, but there's just a stick with some cameras on top and millions of people have connected to the stick and we're going down to the ocean together. Yeah. While before the pregame, Maybe I can see my friends in there. I can talk to my friends. I can say, this, this is crazy that we're doing this. And this connection to the physical world of somebody doing something crazy would be so amazing. Yeah. Um, and then we go down to the bottom of the ocean. On the way, the guide is showing us, like, this is this one special jellyfish that you never see. And you see this jellyfish. And he said, look to your left. And you look to your left. And all of a sudden, there's this, this uh, shark that's transparent, you know, and, and you're, you're, you're taking this whole experience going down to the bottom of the ocean somewhere they've never explored before, all because I opened up newly, saw my friend shouting out this thing that was trending, and I was able to connect and experience this. You could translate this to other things like maybe a wingsuit flyer straps, straps that 360 camera on his back and you log in and you're at the top of a mountain and you're looking down. You're like, I am not doing this, but I feel <laughs> like I am. You get those sweaty palms. You're like, oh my gosh, he jumps off with his friends and you're looking to the left, looking to the right. You're seeing guys fly next to him and you're flying through this valley. And, and by the time it's done, you know, you feel like you just jumped off a mountain in some country in Europe and wingsuit flew all the way to the bottom. Like, to me, that is this feature of newly. It's nothing crazy, but being able to align all of these pieces together, when I read that, I have this motivation to mm. think, this is what I want. Like, that is what I really want to do, you know? And there'll be other companies who do it, I'm sure, but if we can provide a great experience that can allow people to do that in the easiest possible way, I just would be in love. I am in love with my job right now. Um, yeah. But if, when we get there, I would just think that that is the best. I mean, if I logged in today and saw somebody through my phone j jumping off a cliff, I am still super pumped, mm. you know, but the evolution of newly, I read that type of scenario to myself often in the mornings, just to remind myself that there's something big here that I think people could really change their lives, hosting events like this and earning money and the lives of a lot of people who would never be able to do that. I'm not going to jump off a cliff. Uh, I just, I have three kids and a wife, <laughs> you know, I yeah. just, do it. Um, and I'm super scared. <laughs> I don't think yeah. I would anyways, but anyways, that's, if you're asking about future features, I mean, that's where I think a beautiful world could be. Yeah. I mean, as you're talking about this, I, mean, I remembered, um, watching live, the, the, the space dragon, um, uh, SpaceX, the space dragon, uh, launch yeah. happen, right? Where yes. you're shown inside the cockpit and you can yeah. see from the visor of the, of the, uh, the helmet visor of the astronaut and yes. you can feel the rush and you can feel like you can see all the, the electronics working and like showing how things stabilizing by itself. And you realize the astronaut is not even moving. Like the, the, the rocket ship's taking off by itself. And you can move outside and see how it's in the position of Earth and, and seeing how this orbital plan is going. And it's like, whoa, you know, this situation is so compelling, right? Like, yes. right. And when you're talking about, what, you know, all these kind of things, like imagine next, right? Like when uh, I, I think we're the Artemis project that the U.S. is launching, the, the first, like the next man mission to, uh, uh, to uh, the moon, right? Like we're sending people to the moon, but as a permanent base, Right. 
that's yeah. going to have cameras and set up and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Just like, you know, we're going to be able to move around and see what's going on. That's going to yeah. be, you know, like it's like the space station, things like that. That's, you know, like people are getting more ingrained to be able to live through this because there's no way in hell, you know, you're going to be able to experience that. Nah. At least not for a, a few decades, you know? But yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. And if you can empower people to do that, like empower anybody to say, hey, download the app, use this camera, set it up, done. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that is empowering the world to allow more world uh, um, yeah. um, exploration. It's, what a beautiful thing, right? It's so cool. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, I love this idea of like using that that force, that wanting to explore kind of force as like a way to do it. Like Google Maps did that by by mapping it out, right? Like they use the power of search. People want to know as a way to map the world, right? Yeah. And like they sent those those cars along every road, and like yeah. like that's a lot of work. You know, that's of a great course. task, right? Yes. Uh, and Google's really good at doing stuff like this. You know, like um, creating apps where you can like scan pages and digitize books, and now the digital copy added to the collective uh, footprint that people are available to. Like, like they have, they have allowed people to upload data themselves, right? So like, what I'm interested in is like how a crowd of people who are really interested can be utilized by a platform for some collective good. Yeah. Right. Well, think about everyone, everyone's, everyone's a strong word. A lot of people have very unique perspectives, Mm -hmm. unique ideas, unique knowledge, and they just have no way to monetize that. A lot of times you can start a newsletter. You can do that sort of thing. Um, but the, usually the information's up here and part of the information has to be translated out there, like in the world. And so there needs to be a better way to, or in a more attractive way for those people who have all of that experience, knowledge, ideas to be able to give that to people, to be able to find their culture and be able to monetize that as well. I'm a firm believer that you get your knowledge through hard work, through money, through blood, sweat, tears. You know, it's not easy to attain the knowledge that you have. It's not easy to attain the knowledge that I have. You shouldn't give that knowledge away for free. Hmm. I don't think you should. I think there's some you should, but I think a lot of it you should actually have people pay for. And having a platform, again, whether it's us or somebody else, you know, I, I prefer us, obviously. It, it needs to be monetized. More people need to do that. And I think if we've learned anything from COVID, it's kind of necessary. You know, if you want to start earning from your hardships, find a place to monetize that. Start building, that. Start building, start building the platform now <laughs> yeah, as soon as you can. You know, and, and I hope that we become a platform for many people. I always tell people, don't, don't think of Newly as the only tool in your toolbox, right? Don't think of it that way. Um, there might be multiple tools that you use to really talk to your audience. Newly's one. Maybe YouTube's another. Instagram, Facebook are another. And mm-hmm. if I want to think of how we fit into people's daily lives, like y- your daily life, people might add to their stories and uh, post pictures and do some lives throughout the day. And that is their daily transmission to, Hey, here's what I'm up to. Maybe you film your week and then you post it on YouTube at the end of the week. You know, there's live on YouTube. They're still live on, on Instagram and Facebook. But I think between those two places where they really have their holds, like I'm, I'm, I'm putting this video on YouTube, I'm putting my life's uh, daily actions on Instagram. I think right between there, there's like a perfect little niche that we'd like to exploit where you shut off your Instagram, your Facebook and everything to enjoy the show on newly. Mm. Once Newly's over, you go back to Instagram, go back to posting your stuff. And then, of course, if you're filming throughout the week, go post it on YouTube as well. Those places have live streaming video. But I think our approach to specifically the live streaming events is very interesting. And I think we can carve a niche there between those two. Awesome. Uh, Steve, um, what about the, 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 the um, creator culture that's evolving, right? Yeah. Everyone's moving from influencer, just, you know, have influence by creating and, and producing things uh, and then monetizing off that to being a creator. You're actually creating experiences now that people engage with. 
Uh, one of the most spectacular things I've seen is Twitch. My first time I logged into Twitch, the first Twitch stream I see, you know, I literally seen this like little overweight uh, younger kid on playing his playing his favorite video game, but talking about his life and how depressed he is and like mm. how he doesn't feel safe going to school because everyone makes makes fun of him for being uh, being overweight. And on, on uh, here on Twitch and playing games with his friends is like his solstice and like his his, his, his viewer count is going up as having his like his emotional moment. And then people just started like subscribing to his account. His view account is going going up, and somebody just came in and gave him a thousand dollar tip. Thousand dollars, just boom! And then he just swelled up. He's like, "Oh my god! Like, who gave me this?" Right? And you see this community kind of light up, and it's like you know, like giving him positivity and like all these kind of things. And it's like a community response in order to, to somebody who's like who opened up and was like, who chose to be vulnerable with them. And and I'm like, what is happening here? Right? Like, there's a whole culture building around these applications. It's not just consumption anymore. Mm-hmm. It's about working and and delivering and also like um, uh, transacting. Right. Um, so, you know, uh, can that kind of culture exist uh, with Newly right now? Um, is there like a creator, a creator kind of a way for to monetize off the app? Yeah. Um, first of all, nothing matters more than helping people. Like that story is beautiful. It's amazing when somebody like a community can come together to help somebody through mm-hmm. their hardships. Right. And I, I would say, too, for like that is necessary in today's world. I, the physical world and the virtual world, I mean, is brutal. You put yourself out there and it can be awful. Um, right now, what we have is you can monetize any video. You know, if you want to list your video for free or paid, totally up to you. Um, there's a lot of other monetization features we want to add to in the future, in the near future, just so people have a really wide ability to monetize the things they want. You know, um, think of it as like OnlyFans, but no, no skin and better scenery. You know, like that's, that's where we want people to be able to come here and say, you know, mm-hmm. I want, I want people to subscribe to my content cause it's great. Um, and I want people to come here and they can buy my pay-per-views if they want. I'd like to get advertising, get a share of that revenue like YouTube. I mean, there's so many different avenues we can help these creators earn money mm-hmm. and we will, we'll get there. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's so on point because one of the things that was missed, I think was Instagram, uh, especially Instagram, but even Facebook having some kind of Patreon model where people start creating and just weren't creating for free just for Instagram to go out and create ad or an ad network and yeah. then exploit that attention. Um, you know, if they could actually work with people who are creating on their platform and help them monetize in the beginning, we'd have a completely kind of different metaverse uh, that, you know, that, that already operates. Uh, yeah. I think that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, you know, they, uh, um, Facebook has videos like a, a paywall for their videos. Instagram is going to launch all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're so powerful. They will have the ability to have a paid, paid events specifically, uh, uh, create paywalls. Twitter's doing it right now with super hosts. Yeah. Um, that world's going to be really real. And I think there's going to be multiple, multiple people in it, especially live streaming. By 2027, it's going to be a $185 billion world. Wow. Um, it's a big world, you know, and, and there's going to be multiple companies involved in that, whether it's Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Newly. There's going to be people in there. You know, I, we just want to be part of that conversation. And I think our approach is it will be a part of that conversation. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Steve. Uh, I mean, this hour kind of kind of blew right by. I, I really appreciate right it. Hour? Yeah, come on, that's crazy, man. That, that was a fun conversation. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, um, I really like the the tone this took. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, stick around. We're gonna do a quick debrief. Um, mm-hmm. But thank you again, and thank you for everyone who kind of stuck with us. Yeah, thanks, guys. I enjoyed it. <laughs>